We've seen uses of differentials in economics, but relative rates are also very useful in that subject. Here is a fun example. I think this one really captures a lot of cool applications of relative rates. This has to do with elasticity, the elasticity of demand. This measures how relative demand reacts to relative price changes. The elasticity of demand, denoted E, is defined to be minus dq over q divided by dp over p, where, recall, q is quantity and p is price. Now, we've got these relative rates of change, these percent changes. We've got a minus sign out in front because price and quantity demanded are inversely correlated to one another, so that this elasticity E is positive. What is this? Well, in economics class, you might learn that this is the rate of change of relative demand fluctuation with respect to relative price fluctuation. That's a lot of words. I kind of like the whole equation thing a little bit better. The way that this is usually explained is in terms of examples. One says that if E is bigger than one, then what you have is an elastic product, one that is more sensitive to price changes. Think of something like wine, where if the price goes up a little bit, you know, I don't really need it as much. If the price goes up a lot, yeah, I'm not going to buy so much. Compare that in contrast with something that has elasticity less than one, that is inelastic. Something where if that price goes up, I'm going to grit my teeth and just buy it anyhow. Like, I don't know, coffee for me, or medicine or toilet paper or all kinds of things like that. You can understand this quantity from the perspective of examples, but if you want to understand it mathematically and you're not comfortable with some of the economic intuition, then maybe, maybe it would be a good idea to think in terms of our previous work on geometry. Recall that for a ball, a cube, really any solid three-dimensional object, the ratio between the relative rate of change of volume and the relative rate of change of length scale equals 3. This is really a similar sort of measurement. This is kind of like saying that volume is highly elastic with respect to length scale. I think it's sort of cool to be able to take geometric intuition and apply it to economics definitions, or going backwards, taking economics intuition and applying it to different mathematical areas, in this case, geometry. Pro tip, that's a really good skill to cultivate. But let's see what else we can do with this elasticity. Here's a problem. Let's say you want to maximize relative revenue with respect to relative price change. There's a lot of relatives going on there. So that means we're going to be working with relative rates of change. How do we get at this? What do we mean by revenue? Revenue, let's denote that R, is, by definition, price times quantity. It's how much money we're making when we sell this many at this price. OK, given that relation, we can implicitly differentiate. Applying that derivative, we get dr equals, by the product rule, p dq plus q dp. To get the relative rate of change, let's divide through both signs by r, which, being p times q, gives us dr over r equals p dq plus q dp divided by p times q. There's some cancellation, some simplification. We get that this is equal to dq over q, the relative rate of change of quantity, plus dp over p, the relative rate of change of price. OK, now what is it we're trying to get at? We want to maximize this relative revenue with respect to relative price changes. That means that we want to take the derivative of relative revenue with respect to relative price and set it equal to 0 to find the maximum. What do we do? We compute dr over r divided by dp over p. Knowing what we know about dr over r, we can substitute in, divide through by dp over p. What do we get? We get dq over q over dp over p plus 
dp over p over dp over p. That second term simplifies to a 1. The first term is related to elasticity. It is, by definition, minus e. That means that this derivative of relative revenue with respect to relative price is 1 minus e, and it vanishes. It has a critical point precisely where e equals 1, what economists would call perfect elasticity. Now, we're not going to check that the second derivative is negative so that we have a maximum, but trust me on this, this is good enough. There's a lot going on here, and you may not be comfortable with all of the economics and all the interpretations, but this is a really great example for how to manipulate derivatives, differentials, relative rates of change in order to start concluding very serious things about economics. If you get good at differentials and relative rates of change, you're going to find that this is useful not just in mathematics class, but all over the place.